description that goes along with our work from the textbook, the sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a polygon. Um, I do have my note cards. You can see on our word wall behind me that I've got some vocabulary words. For example, this video brought to you by vertical angles. Now, um, if you will, I'm going to share with you this website that goes away from the textbook. It's from geogebra.com, link in the description. And I want you just to sit there and, and, and observe for a minute what happens with the exterior angles of this polygon, right? This polygon in this case is a triangle. Let's see if I can move my face over to the side, okay? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the number of sides from a triangle to a quadrilateral. And we're only focusing on what happens to the exterior angles of the polygon, right? You see that in that pentagon, those angles are opening up. Exterior is all on the outside of the shape. And uh, as you look at it, it looks like as the, as the polygon, as the pentagon collapses down, it forms a certain shape that we should recognize from a long while. Take a look at what happens if we go for a hexagon or a heptagon, or an octagon, nonagon, how about a decagon, right? In this, in this decagon right here, right, the exterior angles, they keep getting smaller and smaller, but there's more of them. But as you collapse the decagon down to a point where it's almost like you can't even see the decagon anymore, what's left on the outside is, that's the part of the video where you say circle, yes, well done. The number of degrees in a circle is, Yes, you, if you were playing along, you would have said 360. Let's do our work for this lesson. Let's go. Okay. Have your highlighter, have your uh, utensil to write with. And then I've done uh, some pre-writing along the way. Remember, these formulas work for convex polygons, but not for concave polygons. Can you figure out why? There is some information you need to consider when you have a concave versus a convex polygon. Okay, habits of mind. We're going to look for and make use of structure. We're going to express regularity and repeated reasoning. And this is directly related to the learning target from page 319. Derive a formula for the sums of the measures of exterior angles of a polygon. In fact, we're going to see a very common number result. Here's what an exterior angle is. Take your highlighter out here. I'm going to highlight angle 4, right? That's one of the exterior angles. This is the exterior angle to angle 1. Angle 6 is an exterior angle and angle 5. And notice that there might be several different ways of creating exterior angles, but this is specifically what we're referring to because in the model of the collapsing shape, those exterior angles kind of make like a fan shape. It actually reminds me of like, you know, a, a shutter on a camera, those old-timey cameras as the shutter collapses and it forms this circle. All right, excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at our work for right now. Uh, in our lesson right now, we're going to use the diagram and your formula for the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon and the linear pair postulate. Sort through your cards. There are so many cards now. I mean, that's just what it is. We always seem to have more and more cards added to the pile. Get over it. Get used to it. Add to your word wall. Put one of these up in your room so you can look at them before you fall to bed to sleep. Uh, sure, that sounded right. Okay, so here it is. I wrote a bunch of stuff. Maybe you should pause the video in this moment and copy paste, and then I'm going to fill in the blanks with you. Here we go. All right, so right about there. Yes, uh huh. Measure of angle one plus measure of angle four equals, we're going to fill in that blank. Measure of angle two plus measure of angle five equals, we're going to fill in that blank. And so let me pause for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you write down everything on that page? If not, pause and go back and do it again. Here we are. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle four because of the linear pair postulate. Linear pairs are supplementary, right? Linear pairs look like this. Ooh, I need to make my screen bigger so you're not squinting or zooming in, right? Linear pairs look like this, right? It's an angle plus an angle, and when they make a straight line, they are in fact supplementary. They in fact add to 180. That is our first blank space in the text that you copied down on page 328. One, hello, 180. Uh, it turns out measure of angle two plus the measure of angle five, that also forms a linear pair. So it has to equal when added together, 180. And then uh, angle three, the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle six is the same, also 180. 
Uh, if you add up all of those angles, right, if I have measure of angle one plus the measure of angle four, measure of angle two plus the measure of angle five, I'm gonna add them together. Measure of angle three plus the measure of angle six, add them together. I'm really doing, right, I'm really adding, move this out of the way, 180 plus 180 plus 180. That's, forgive me, 180 plus 180 plus 180, right? That 180, boom, that 180, linear pair, that 180, linear pair. We're doing a substitution to bring things back together. Substitution, uh, yeah. I'm amazed, actually, I found those so quickly, right? So we've got a linear pair postulate. We've got the substitution property. We're going to add things together because they happen to be equal. Now, we can cleverly combine this, right? It's addition. So we can put, uh, instead of angle 1 and angle 4 next to each other, we can put uh, angle 1 and angle 2 next to each other. It's all plus signs, so you can swap things around with the addition property. That's uh, called uh, commutative property of addition. But I can put measure of angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. I can put all of these together and I know where they came from, I'm gonna highlight them. Those are in fact angle one, angle two, and angle three. They're the interior angles of that triangle. These three angles add up to 180 degrees. And then angle four, angle five, and angle six are the outside. We don't know how much they are, but we do know that 180 plus 180 plus 180 is 540. So if you add up all three 180s, which is all of these angles on the inside and outside of our triangle polygon, the interior angles of the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So in reality, what we have is the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five plus the measure of angle six plus 180 degrees is equal to 540 degrees. That is the interior angle, right? Interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. And then we have angle four, angle five, and angle six being the outside, exterior angles. If you subtract 180 from both sides in order to solve for the sum of angle four, angle five, and angle six, you wind up with 360 for an answer. Turns out the three exterior angles of a polygon, in this case a triangle. This is our confirmation proof statement. The sum of the exterior angles is 360 degrees. And for final visual proof that that's truly the case, take a look again at our GeoGebra shape. When you change the size of the triangle, like from a decagon back down to a triangle, all three exterior angles slide together and create a, a circle as the triangle reduces down in size. We're gonna continue this activity on page 329. We got some formulas to build. So once again, thank you so much for stopping by and checking this video out, clicking through it. Please go ahead and click forward on the next video because we're gonna continue our journey with finding a formula for the sum of the exterior angles. See you in the next video.